Okay, welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations. It's a pleasure to welcome to the program a dear, honest friend of mine uh, from a long time back, a number of times been a guest on the program, a major scholar in terms of understanding the human condition with a particular understanding from a political context, and that's uh, Stephen Eric Broner, PhD, distinguished professor at Rutgers, and Stephen, so good to see you again and welcome it's you back pleasure. to New York. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thanks. you've been, uh, well, maybe we can just kick it right off and everything. We've done a number of programs with you, and you're a scholar of uh, Middle East, among other things, and you did just return within a relatively short period of time from a relatively brief but meaningful visit to the country of uh, Iran. Iran. So maybe yeah. you could share a little bit of that if you can as a way to jump in. We could talk sure. about things going on in Syria, Iran, and what's going on. We, um, uh, I work with uh, U.S. Academics for Peace. Yes, I know you do. And we had for a while tried to sort of set this up. Yeah. And uh, we wound up meeting uh, as a delegation that met representatives from their Institute for International Studies. Okay. Yeah. That's sort of a, the Iranian think tank, the yeah. most important think tank that advises the government. Okay. Uh -huh. So for us this was a, a great opportunity. Sure, yeah. And we uh, also w uh, went because of all the controversy about nuclear weapons right. and what they're doing right and the fear that iran has uh, created change of uh, executive power exactly yeah. and so the question yeah. is is uh -huh. this a real change yeah right right i think we're all wondering about that and i think it is okay uh, that's interesting uh, yeah. um because everyone spoke about a window of opportunity yeah right everybody there on their side yeah Okay. Uh, a window of opportunity, and in fact, they were very worried about it because mm -hmm. if that window of opportunity closes with respect to the nuclear uh, negotiations, uh, the finalizing of, an, of, uh, of a deal between yeah. the United States right. and yeah. Iran, they're very worried about a right-wing backlash. Okay. Yeah, I suppose there would be a lot of that pent-up right? kind of thing there, yeah. And this is really a uh, a question of, does Iran look to the West and the, uh, the United States, mm -hmm. or does it look to Russia and uh, China? Putin and Syria. Uh, Putin and Syria. I wonder Syria. if those are all linked together, maybe, and so Well, uh, certainly yeah. uh, uh, Iran has... Um, Troops and uh, <coughs> advisors uh, that are that are helping uh, or aiding uh, President Bashar Assad. The, yeah, uh, and uh, Hezbollah in Libya in Le Lebanon. Yeah, and oh. basically this is a split between the Shia and the Sunni branches. I want to really talk Islam. about that if we can. If you got some understanding, yeah, uh, but, a uh, bit of understanding. Yeah, but, yeah you're right. I understand. Um, yeah. But the, the, the important point, first of all, th that, I, for example, I learned, we learned a great deal uh, uh, on this trip. Uh -huh. First thing we learned was, which I didn't know, maybe, yeah. you, maybe you knew, uh -huh. uh, was that there is actually a religious fatwa that came out. A fatwa is yeah. a prohibition yeah. on uh, building a nuclear bomb. Really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know this. Yeah, uh, I did. I've never heard that before. Before now. Yeah. yeah right. And uh, this is what we were told. The second um, thing that seems very clear is that the sanctions are hurting everyday people. Absolutely. That's what I understand. It's and grim. It's, it's yeah. grim. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. And for those who um, Sanction, sanctions is almost a study in itself. Okay. Right? There are different yeah. levels of sanctions. Yeah. Now, the worst kind of sanction would be um, the, uh, w what's called dual use. Mm -hmm. So, let's say yeah. I'm going to uh, send over this yeah. uh, cup. Yeah. Anything that, uh, that can be used by the, uh, by the military uh -huh. is by definition cut out. Yeah, well that's that, under sanction. So basically, I can't export yeah, the cup. Yeah, right. I can't export medicine. Mm -hmm. I can't export anything which is used 
by the military. It may have a dual use. might be used for some peaceful person to save lives, but it also might possibly be used to be made into some sort of a weapon that would be against us. Yeah. So that's dual use, so we can cut out everything. One of the More or less, that's what yeah, the way they can weigh it if they're one of the other thing. Enough. One of the other things yeah. uh, we learned that was, uh, I mean, I actually had thought this, but uh, we met with the chief negotiator on uh, the nuclear uh, treaty, mm -hmm. and uh, his name was Badinajad. Okay. And um, not Ahmadinejad. No, no, right? I know. Uh, yeah. I know the difference. Uh, very What's right. in the name? Yeah, What's in the name? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, we certainly were talking with him, and he said, "Look, um, if you're talking about nuclear weapons." You have to imagine yourself why it is anybody would want a nuclear weapon, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So you'd have to think about a target. Yeah. And yeah. he said, look, all the nations around us, mm -hmm. Syria uh, is a wreck. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pakistan is a wreck. Yeah. All these, all these different, uh, Iraq is a wreck. Yes, yes. So why, so there's no... Um, regional enemy we would be using this on. Right. The only other possibility would be to use it against Israel or the United States. Right. And he said, but we know this would be suicide. Right. Okay. So given yeah. all this, why would we be building the bomb? That's an interesting way of seeing it. Yeah. yeah right. And um, one of the things that was really striking, I mean, I've been to Iran two or three times before. Yeah, I know you had. Yeah. Uh -huh. There was uh, the people we met were much more with it, much more sort of uh, concerned with making clear what their position was mm -hmm. than the, the groups we'd met before. And uh, oh, you mean the more recent group? Or yeah. More, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that uh, President Rouhani mm -hmm. is the real deal. Okay. Also, they were very impressed uh, with President Obama. And they were impressed that Obama and Rouhani exchanged telephone calls. Yeah, that's true. He did. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, I mean, you think to yourself, mm -hmm. a telephone call, big deal. It seemed but a big deal to me when I heard it, that it, it happened. Yeah, yeah. well, oh. I, yeah, I think most people, though, probably thought, oh, so what? Yeah. And what this shows is that uh, the United States is taking Iran seriously, mm -hmm. that there's an mm -hmm. engagement of equals. Uh -huh. uh, there's a great sensitivity all over the Middle East okay. uh, to, shall we say, forms of uh, Eurocentrism, uh, sort of Eurocentrism yeah. and the, uh, fe uh, reacting against feelings of humiliation. Yeah, sure, of course, I would understand. And it's Can understandable, you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. In a post-colonial era. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the, well, the other thing that they, they emphasized was how they wanted uh, forms of cooperation. They wanted their side more or less told mm -hmm. on, uh, in, in the United States and in, um, also back at home in, in Iran. So mm -hmm. many people did interviews such as with you or uh, radio stuff or um, email interviews what have you. And uh, they're also, uh, they were also very interested in working cooperatively. Okay. Now, that's encouraging, yeah. It's yeah. very encouraging yeah, yeah. because there was nothing like this before. Really? You, yeah. And you've been talking to those, yeah. those people in those positions earlier, and this was a qualitative this difference? This is a qualitative difference. Really? Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. And uh -huh. um, I, I think... Um, there was also a, a reasonableness that I saw t this time uh -huh. that I hadn't seen before. Okay. There's much less dogmatism, much right. less, uh, you know, rhetoric. In fact, there was no rhetoric at all. Really? Yeah. And also, um, let's put it this way, foreign ministry officials uh -huh. whom many of us had met before I, I met in New York. There were continuing contacts you've had over the long history of yeah, your contacts there. More or People you can fall back on and yeah. telephone numbers, home numbers. But, uh, but yeah. th this guy, uh, two or three guys actually in particular who, yeah. 
let's put it this way, and we're not exactly super charming when we, uh, when we first yeah. met him yeah. under Ahmadinejad. Yeah. Suddenly they were sweet as pie uh -huh. when, uh, when we uh, came this time. Okay, okay. <coughs> so yeah, it's uh, the election counter for something, apparently. And, uh, yes. And uh, when they say the, uh, the, 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 the sanctions are having an effect, apparently, perhaps, they are? Yeah. Okay. Now, now that's been forced upon them. Uh, that has been what forced What about all the them? claims to pride and the force that we will not be intimidated by European power, memories of Mossadegh, uh, That came Shaw, up all the time. All of that. that that's the, still the there. Day, the Mossadegh uh, uh, events where the United States basically overthrew uh, the democratically elected uh, yeah. prime minister uh, Mosaday, and that's how the Shah came into power. That's right. Um, Which was uh, Eurocentrically seen, appropriately. Uh, totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. And then was overthrown. And then was overthrown by Ayatollah And the uh, spirit Ayatollah of that overthrowing, Khomeini. that's 79. Yeah. And the spirit of that still is there? A sense of uh, pride? Yes, I think, I th yes, they, they are proud of the revolution. I don't think there's any question about it. And this leads to something else, which we don't think about enough. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a secular person. Yeah, I am I, too. I know. Yeah. I, but the reality is mm -hmm. that in the Middle East, we, uh, the West is going to have to learn to deal with uh, Islam. Okay, that's a big, big issue, it's is it not? It's a big, yeah. big issue. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think they know that also. In other okay. words, as much as we would like to see some secular, liberal, modernizer. Right. It's yeah. just not happening. Uh -huh. uh, it seems to have a hold, doesn't it? Yeah. It has a tremendous hold, and yeah. one of the reasons it has, it has a hold in the countryside. In the it, countryside? Uh, not in the so much in the urban areas? Or? No. Really? The, Is that a true fact? Yeah. And Are you talking about the whole region? I would, I would say from... Indonesia from to Mauritania? I mean, that I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, certainly that's true... In uh, in Syria, it's true yeah. in Jordan. It's true in uh, it was true in Iraq mm, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's it seems to be the case in um, Iran as well. Okay. The you know in, in the cities, the mm. cities breed a kind of cosmopolitanism. Yeah, right. uh, they breed dealing with others. They you know you you learn that the world exists, yes. so to speak. Yeah. Uh -huh. In the uh, countryside, in many of these many of these areas, it really is still very uh, primitive. Is the wrong word, but it's isolated yeah. and it's parochial, uh -huh. and uh, the appeal is the appeal is real. Is also, that is that is that characteristic of the world? Do you think? I wonder. Yes, yeah, I think so. Be. We get a lot of rural redneck yeah. thinking and things, exactly you know, uh, yeah if yeah. you think about the tea party yeah you think yeah about tea Christian party is exactly it shows that up demographically perfectly yeah. in the tea party doesn't yeah. it? yeah yeah and uh, weirdly enough it also shows itself up in fascism oh really yeah is that a fact uh, yeah. yeah whether yeah. in italy or in, in germany, uh, germany yeah. uh, the original fascist movements were movements of the countryside. That's and interesting. Uh, really, yeah, uh, I, yeah. And uh, also... You think uh, Munich and all that, but yeah, yeah. In, uh, actually, in Munich, there's an interesting, uh, there's an interesting mm -hmm. story. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, this yeah. digresses from Iran, but... No, but we'll get back. Um, there was, in 1918... Wow. ...an uprising No, in fooling, Munich. yeah. yeah. Uh, the, it was a, an attempt to create a Munich Soviet, a Bavarian Soviet. Oh. Okay. And this was in the city. It was actually sort of incompetently, but utopian in yeah, utopian right. terms, run by, uh, it's called the, um, the Soviet of the Literati. <laughs> Uh, uh, and there yeah. were people like Ernst Toller who was involved. They were, they were very fine people. Yeah, right. Well, there have been uh, a lot of idealism and, flying around then, and I Munich would think. Yes, and Munich yeah. was also very free-thinking. Yeah, okay. For example, Dachau, where the, um, where the concentration camp yeah. uh, was. Yeah. That used to be, before, before Hitler, that was a little artist's enclave. I'll be damned. I yeah. Yeah. A lot of the expressionists hung out there. Kandinsky there. and uh, Kandinsky, I love yeah, Kandinsky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Gabriel Munta. Yeah, and so yeah. That was uh, that was their town. But anyway, that uprising was crushed by uh, f forces, uh, paramilitary forces organized from the countryside.
From the countryside. From the countryside. So they came in. It was very brutal. Mm. Crushed the progressive mm. uh, attempts. Yeah. And after that, almost all the great intellectuals went to uh, Berlin. I'll be damned. And that's, that's how Munich got its reputation as being conservative. Yeah, right. And, right. and, and okay. Berlin uh, well, there you go. Uh, achieved that, that great reputation. But anyway, back to the theme of uh, Islam, a big issue that yeah, is, has to be dealt with in one of something things, other than propagandistic terms. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things that uh, we spoke about was the need for interfaith dialogue. Now, this is not faith dialogue. Yeah, okay. this is not. Um, how should I put it? This is not my thing. Right. But uh, many, uh, a number of the people in our delegation were theologians. Yeah. And uh, they, of course, were very positive about it. Okay. And I think that's right. I think that um, Let it happen even as secular, happen. Yeah. yeah, even yeah. as secular people, yeah. um, I think it's really important that Sunnis sit down with. Excuse me, Shia, mm -hmm. then sit down with Christians, uh -huh. and uh, ultimately, I would hope Jews. Uh huh. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But the the first steps, um, I think, can be made now. Well, for let's. These talk, kind of I wonder if we could talk about that because I I've uh, uh, I, I, uh, uh, Iran has a really ancient uh, history. Ur, or the, uh, you know, no, that's in Iraq. It's Iraq, but in that part of the world, and then they had a. They had a, um, a spiritual presence of Mithra. Yeah. Mithra was a major uh, person. They had uh, Zoroastrian. It might yeah. have been. It might have Mithra. If I'm not mistaken, it goes back. It's the source of Zoroastrianism, which held sway for a good deal. And uh, they had a monotheistic uh, belief system around Ur. Uh, before they did have that within the Judaic community. Monotheism was Well, basically Abraham came from Ur. Yeah, Ur Abraham did, but uh, what mm. I'm saying is that, that they, the, the tradition, the spiritual tradition of Iran goes way back, preda oh, yeah. predates the Hebrew, Hebraic. Oh, yeah. Monotheism. The, the idea of monotheism, it's an Indo-European language. Mm. They had a huge contact and widespread uh, contact, and that's part of their tradition, and um, they, they've got this, and then they became, um, uh, th 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 that's something we ought to keep in mind, I think, and then they became Shia. They are Shia. They became Shia. By and, and large. Uh, but they're very, very proud. Of the, and we all want the to talk about what is the difference that is there between the Shia and the Sunni. Okay, before, uh, uh, just before that, uh, it's important to note also that the, uh, certainly the Iranians I met and I've known uh, are very proud of their tradition. It's a tradition, rich tradition. Rich tradition rich. of poet, poetry. Yeah, absolutely. Poets like Hefez mm. and Rumi and, you know, um, Goethe in, in, uh, in Germany. Really? Uh, yeah. Responded to Hafez, a few who lived earlier. Uh -huh. uh, Hafez's most famous poem is called the Divan, uh -huh. and Goethe wrote really? the West East Divan. Uh -huh. really? And it's yeah. at that yeah. point yeah. Uh, that Goethe and Wieland, uh, a philosopher and uh, a literateur, yeah. uh, came up with the concept of world literature. Oh wow! Yeah, and they're okay. very pr they're, yeah. they're very proud of that, and legitimately so. And that language Farsi is Indo-European, I believe. This I know very little about. It's not Semitic. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I believe. Yeah, I'm, you may be. Yeah, you may I, be I'm right. just making the point. And then also, again, why is it? I mean, that Zoroastrianism, which was major, it's sort of dying out. I think now it's gone over to India or something. You now. still see temples, and uh, one of the people who was on our uh, delegation, a very good friend, uh, Janet Amigi, okay, uh, mm -hmm. did her dissertation on Zoroastrianism. Did she really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A yeah. Very interesting yeah. woman, and. Um, she actually uh, met with some uh, yeah. some people who were representative of the. Uh, but that religion. can bring us around and so with a little grounding background uh, because that's seen, uh, you know, as an enemy uh, combatant or something in the consciousness of Western American people that kind of thing. They did seize our people at the embassy and whatnot, you know, in '79 and everything. But uh, and then it became sh it's it is thought of as a major uh, font of uh, of Shia. Yeah. 
Okay. And, now, and so much of the conflict seems to be, even though we keep saying, well, who could care about that kind of thing or something in our mind? We're thinking materialistically or something. But the conflict between a Shia and Sunni view of the universe within Islam seems to be a major dividing point between a lot of these people who are fighting No question other. about it. And we and don't uh, understand it. What is the difference? Well, what is characteristic of each? And why does it make a difference? Are there any analogies with other political That's or quasi-religious movements within the world that we could begin to get an understanding of what's going on this, in that part of the world. This conflict is uh, between Shia and Sunni. Right. Is in a certain way, the, the analogy you're looking for w um, would be the conflict between Protestants and Catholics. Not between, it's not between uh, Judaism? No. I, you don't this, think? I don't think so. Okay. I think uh, um, the reason I say that is that what uh, Protestantism and Catholicism yeah. are two different wings of Christianity. Yeah, okay. And in the same way, they're two different wings of Islam. Now, what's, what's interesting, there's a, a, a phrase from Freud, uh, from Sigmund Freud, which I like very much, yeah. which is the narcissism of small differences. Oh, that's interesting. That's it's, funny. It's very insightful. Is, that, is there a quote or that? Is the yeah, the narcissism of small I put. I got a little page on my site, quotes. I think I might like to put you might that put down. That that on. It's got a lot of uh, yeah. things you can chew on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. neurosis. A, a good, another good one is neurosis makes you stupid, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is also is that from all? Freud. Yeah. Oh, Freud, okay. Um, but this narcissism of small differences is very useful for explaining this. Okay. Because the actual differences between uh, Sunni and Shia, uh, I mean, they are so esoteric. Uh, yeah. They deal with the six, they, and I, I, I don't think it's worthwhile going into all the, the Not specific. all, but just some The taste. basic thing yeah. is uh, between Little them rituals? Or? Is, no, no, no. who, is who is the There's legitimate also. descendant of uh, of uh, Muhammad, okay. the, the okay. prophet? Yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah. Both, of course, uh -huh. believe in Muhammad. Uh, yes, right. Both uh, uh, both uh, have a monotheistic view of Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, both uh, uh, have their mosques. Both have their imams, but they're divided by a, 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 the kind of different understanding. Uh -huh of how Shia, uh, I'm sorry, of how Islam should develop. Some, um, it's often said that the conflict between them is between those who uh, argue on the <coughs> laws, strict interpretation of the laws, mm -hmm. and those that are more secular in their, in their outlook. Okay. Uh, but I don't think the, I think at this point, the it's not a question of the religious heritages. It's a question of, t of two different religious institutions, if I can put it this way. It's okay. like two churches fighting. Uh, well, and boy, there's been some pretty fierce things that are done along those and, lines. And yeah. this is where I think we should be a bit humble okay. over this. Yeah. Because if you think back a few hundred years yeah. to the Thirty Years' War Absolutely. and the Hundred Years' War, Absolutely. close to a, a third of Europe was destroyed. A third of the population died yeah. because of these religious wars. Right. Uh, right? right. Over right. hundreds That's of right. years. That's right. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And uh, here you have a situation where this is breaking out. I mean, these conflicts have been before, but now there's a, uh, a popular appreciation of those conflicts yeah. through the media and so on, yeah. and through Iraq. Uh, I mean, look, yeah. Before, yeah. before the Iraq invasion, yeah. Who even cared about the, any of right, this? Right. Uh, Middle Eastern studies was like that. Yeah, and now, it was a lot of it was just superimposed over on realpolitik about getting access to resources sure, and all that kind of thing. Exactly, it, it is like a lot of the news. And exactly, yeah. and um, the now, deeper currents weren't understood. Or now case, we can yeah. we now we talk about a clash of civilizations. R we well, talk uh, yeah. or, or a dialogue of civilizations. Okay. Uh, now we I, I think we we're slowly beginning to grasp. Uh, the complexity of the of uh, relating to a civilization that's just very different than our own. Yeah. Did Huntington see that would, in the clash of yes. civilization? Yes. Uh, to be fair, he, he did. called that Samuel Huntington. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. And uh, in contrast to what's usually assumed, in that uh, 
article and then the book. Uh, it's not like he's calling for war on uh, on Islam. Mm -hmm. He's but it, it, he's calling for almost indifference to Islam. Oh. In other words, yeah, let him go their way. Yeah. And um, trouble is, they had all that oil. For one thing, uh, that's exactly right. And oh. the other the other trouble is that this is increasingly becoming a global society. Absolutely. <laughs> Exponentially uh, almost. Yeah. yeah. And neither the West, uh, neither the Occident nor the Orient can simply abstract themselves from this globalization process. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Globalization process of capitalism, uh, ex the expansion of capitalism, expansion of the commodity form. Yeah. Uh, this works its way into the everyday life of people. I'll yeah. give you an example. Please. Um, I was a few years ago invited to, I think it was either the first or the second um, international conference uh, of human rights in Iran mm -hmm. that was uh, was held in Gom, which was Khomeini's birthplace. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, the uh, I had never really encountered imams before. I knew yeah. about rabbis, and yeah, I know right. about Already, right, yeah. priests, yeah, and yeah. so on. But I never really uh, encountered right. So those that I, a number of them walked in, and number one, they walked in with their computers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They were incredibly well read about Western ideas of, uh, of human rights. I mean, uh -huh. they disagreed with it, but, uh, and they were, um, how should I put it? They were tied into the discourse okay. that we yeah, that we that hold were here. used to in the news. And so yeah, well, yeah, the, yeah, the view of the world. And yeah. so here yeah. you, you imagine yeah. yourself. Yeah. you know, you have an imam dressed as an imam. Yeah, you see, they with a computer yeah. and, 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 and they're hip and they're hip. Yeah, and they're yeah. hip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's quite amazing. And I'm not saying all of them are like that. Yeah, no, no. But uh, certainly, uh, certainly, this is uh, this is something to. This is the prototype what I think is coming. It was an eye opener. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, you know, you think of the uh, this enormous uh, hotel that's being built in in Mecca. And I'm uh, not aware. I, uh, supposedly it, this massive uh, massive thing. I, I know that there there is a You mean just currently it's in construction? I, I yeah, haven't heard of okay, yeah, I gotta yeah. get catch up, yeah. Uh, and in uh, Iran itself uh -huh. in right near Tehran there is the uh, uh, the grave of uh, of Khomeini. Khomeini is put into a, a sort of a shrine and this is a huge complex. You can huh? see yeah. Right. He lies there, and his and his um, uh, son lies there also. Uh -huh. And uh, people come in to pray. Uh -huh. There'll be there'll be a hotel near there. There's uh -huh. and this is supposed to be one of the, uh, become one of the largest uh, religious sites outside of Mecca. I'll be darned. Yeah. Really? Okay. Really. And this shows you yeah. know it's it's like even in the United States you have. Uh, Church malls, yes. right? Yeah, and that's mega true. Church yeah, you got so these mega churches. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. So, I think these are religious institutions that are fighting. It's now to the point. It, it it's not. It doesn't help matters simply to lay out the esoteric differences between the two two religions. Yeah. What, what I think is much more important is for these two institutions to meet and uh, and begin a dialogue with the Christians and with the Druze. The both of them, the, with yeah. the Christian and the Dru and the Druze. Okay. And I think this is this is one place you can start a dialogue. Uh -huh. I think the other another place which is uh, quite clear and the um, I was amazed how open they were about this. Uh, the, uh, another place to start a dialogue is over Afghanistan. Boy, okay, yeah. Iran yeah. is uh, ha was in a certain way helpful uh, before, mm -hmm. um, and uh, when it was engaged in this war with uh, with Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was very helpful with the United States in uh, in Afghanistan. They can be so again uh -huh. in Syria. Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. The, in, in in Syria. Um, I think that uh, it's very hard to imagine any serious peace taking place without Iran. 
and the current, uh, some of the current discussions, uh, peace discussions, uh, that don't include Iran. Well, what, what's going on with Lebanon and Hezbollah and Nasrallah and in, all that? In um, uh, Iraq, of course, there's yeah. this, in Iraq, yeah, there's yeah. this really the most radical conflict between Shia and Sunni. Yeah, it's really, uh, yeah. Each Every day there's another bombing going exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, the amount of people who are getting killed. Yeah, it's this. awful. Yeah. And uh, each of these uh, institutions, these religious institutions, has its paramilitary organizations. Yeah. So this is like no joke. Yeah. Now, uh, the Shia have uh, Shia organizations in, uh, I in Iraq have been strengthened by fighters from Iran. Mm -hmm. Just as the uh, Bashar uh, Assad's regime, uh, which is run by Alawites, yeah, that's a yeah. branch it's of... Yeah, an odd uh, thing or something. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's sort of an, uh, an offshoot of His father of was the leader of that, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah well, Bashar. the whole family. Yeah, the whole family, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so... Um, how should we say, fighters, is religious fighters, and there are those, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the countryside, yeah. move, uh, have moved into Iraq. Mm -hmm. What that does is basically say to me, mm. you're not going to get much of a resolution of the conflict in Iraq or in Syria without including Iran. You can see also that this, uh, that the... Uh, uh, if you think of the groups that have helped Hamas, Hamas, as you know, has come come out for the rebels. Yeah, mm. you know, uh, the rebels in Syria. Yeah. Um, whereas Hezbollah has come out for the Shia uh -huh. uh, regime of Assad. Uh -huh. So the two different, uh, um, what we consider radical groups, mm -hmm. uh, ba uh, in terms of Israel. Right, and the pal helping the Palestinians are on different sides of the conflict. Uh, it, will there be camaraderie on the Israeli issue among them all, well, sure or what do you think? Or oh, what I is think the, that, uh, th that this it, this has become almost ingrained at this point. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Israeli action, but they know. I mean, at least in Iran, they know, and I think in, they in know what? they know that Israel is not simply some teeny weeny little country yeah. surrounded by the barbarian hordes. Mm. Israel has become, uh, has lived twice as long as a colonial power yeah. than it did as the little state that's described in movies like uh, Exodus. Yeah, ex yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, um, they understand that if they, that if they mess with uh, Israel on in terms of nuclear weapons, yeah, uh -huh. they're going to be obliterated. They well, know that. And uh, okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Israel has four hundred. Is considered how many? They, we have to between guess three hundred and four hundred yeah. nuclear weapons. Yeah. I, I mean, it's almost a ridiculous situation to say you're worried about one weapon mm -hmm. in um, in uh, Iran. Yeah. No, no, they know that Israel is a powerful force. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, th in fact, they may even think it's more powerful than it actually is. Um, yeah. So there's a weird, at the same time, and there's a weird respect uh, in, in this, as uh, strange yeah, as it yeah, sounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, at the same time, it's, uh, uh, all sections of the Arab world have identified with the Palestinians. Yeah. And uh, oppose the Israeli occupation. I think much of the world has. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Here, Israel is fighting against history. Yeah. And I, I, I frankly don't understand this with regard to Jews coming to, uh, uh, or, and dealing with anti-Semitism. I think that uh, a peace program, um, and I'm thinking in particular of that proposed by the Arab League, in which all Arab states officially recognize yeah. Israel Abdullah, in yeah. exchange basically for Israel going back to... 67. Uh, yeah, uh, 67 yeah. quarters. Uh, I think that is the basis of every deal that's on the table. And uh, for Israel's own benefit, I think it should do this. Mm 
Yeah, but there seem to be indications of the exact opposite. All over Jerusalem, the West Bank, exactly. and everywhere else, there seems to be an arrogance of power being manifested by Mr. There's Netanyahu and company. No question about it. Yeah. And on top of it, uh, the extent to which um, the Israeli state caves into the demands of radical settlers, whether religious or ultra Do you think a lot of that is coming from radical settlers, Russian or, or what? Or? Uh, there's some, yeah, yeah, but also religious uh, settlers. The extent to which they cave in makes the situation worse. You think the, the building in Jerusalem and that sort of thing is caving into settlers, or is it part of the Likud? Is it part of the well, Jewish a, sense of we've won, we can do whatever we want kind of attitude that's uh, been characteristic I, of I, powerful I, forces? They're overwhelmed. They're a superpower. They seem to be a superpower. Yeah, but note, seem to be. Yeah, but note that uh, Israel speaks of Iran, for example, as an existential threat. Yeah, I know. They Whatever that. that means. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well that's they in their interest to, present to do that. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, their raison d'etre in a yeah. set, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. in a certain yeah. way, Israel has a, or is Zionist Israel, has a stake in presenting itself as the victim. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, well, they had suffered quite a holocaust in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, here's the, here is the thing. The people who were actually in the holocaust... Mm. Uh, they're dying off. That is true, yeah. And uh, there's something, I don't know, uh, perverse about young kids yeah. today speaking about the Holocaust as if they were the ones who were involved in it. Well, yeah, you know it's a I mean? generational thing, yeah. And right, uh, yeah. There's, there's something false about it. Yeah, right. Um, as false as, uh, for example, African Americans, given their oppression and so on, somehow believing that there's that they that uh, their condition hasn't changed since slavery. I yeah. mean, that's just uh, crazy. Right, right, right. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, yeah, and I so I'm very big on that. Mm -hmm. Now uh, on uh, on pushing the peace process, but it has to be done in a meaningful way. Yeah, and the, the states, the Arab states are incredibly frustrated they're not uh, with Israel because of its stalling on the uh, on the peace process it's pushing of settlements while it talks about while it negotiates uh, well they, they stuff that President Obama pointed out as well well do they feel that they've just got unlimited support from the United States everything they got the power they got the teeth they've bit in their teeth and why should they give in when they've had to suffer so and they can now exert themselves Indeed in a real politic sense, to take whatever they damn well please. But now think and of it outside, outside, you know, outside the world. That's uh, the attitude seems to be manifest by them, that they're a superpower, they can set the tune, the clash for civilization, and advance civilization over these walks, more or less, so that's a European attitude. And I mean, that's characteristic, it seems to be. Yeah, the, w one of the things this does, though, if, yeah. it, if I think it gets oh. even worse. Oh, worse? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, one of the uh, themes that goes around the, uh, uh, the Arab world yeah. is that of a world Jewish conspiracy. Okay. That's uh, from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. I remember when I was in Iraq yeah. uh, before the war. Uh -huh. um, people constantly wanted to talk about this. Yeah. Protocols of Zion are a fabrication. Uh, it's all banking and interest and all that kind of Jews stuff. Jews control right? everything. Yeah, it's a worldwide control money. Yeah, they're money. So yeah, they yeah. look at the United yeah. States. The United States jumps when Israel talks, mm -hmm. or at yeah. least it did uh, until uh, recently, and the claims. Well, they must be behind. You don't it. think they're still jumping when Israel talks? I think that I think the following. I think that there APEC is APEC is a powerful. Uh, a, yeah, maybe the most powerful. Yeah. I don't know if there's somebody more powerful. Well, the lobby. lobby. Uh, I'm not sure. But I'm not sure. Be this is yeah. So I, other big players have moved in with lots of dollars. And that, yeah, to I don't think the it's just. Process. I don't think it's it's the money though. You don't. I, okay. No. It usually I, counts for something. It usually counts for something, but I think w uh, the issue is that polit Jews or politic uh, politically interested Jews are organized. Uh, okay. They they yeah. vote. Yeah. Now. You think of the states in which uh, a Jewish vote is important. California, yeah. New York, mm. Chicago, Florida, 
Yeah. This is pretty serious stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it would be crazy for a senator in New York to come out in support of a Palestinian state when there's no, uh, there's no Arab vote and no Arab organization. Right. I said that, yeah. by the way, at yeah. the, uh, uh, in, the in Iranians. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and elsewhere. Just politically. Yeah. And, so they titled, yeah. and they agreed. Well, yeah, they uh, can understand the political They can understand reality. that. Yeah, right. Um, whether that becomes public or not is another story. Yeah. But, the, yeah, I think the policymakers have a grip on this, uh -huh. at least to a degree. Uh -huh. One of the reasons that civic diplomacy, like what we engaged in, is important, I think, is because there are misunderstandings of how the systems work. Our, we have misunderstandings about how the Iranian system works, and they have misunderstandings about how our system works. Even people who've been here and so forth? They, there are people there that are I think informed, that educated here and so forth? Now, I'm not saying, of course, I, I'm not saying some. everyone. No, of course not. But, no, but, but the in, people... In meaningful circles, politically yeah, meaningful. I think, there, I think there really is a, a great deal of misunderstanding. Okay, okay. For example, uh, uh, what was the uh, thing that's... Uh, one of the... One of the uh, uh, our counterparts said at some point that um, Islamophobia rules America. Uh, uh -huh. And one of us, I forgot it was myself or Janet or her well, husband, there's Larry da them Lawrence to see Davis. Things. There is a reason for them to see things. Uh, yeah. Through the propagandistic thing which informs the American people. Now, of course, there is, uh, Islamophobia is a real tendency in America. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I Whether mean, it rules is another matter. Well, rules is uh, that's a matter of that's a quantitative question, uh, not qualitative. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but the is point is, they want it, it, it. It's important, just as we learn to see the difference between Sunni and Shia, or between Shia and Alawites. Uh, it's important that that uh, our counterparts begin to see that there their conf their uh, conflicts within the Jewish community. Mm -hmm that there are conflicts in the American community, that there are people that they can talk to mm -hmm. and uh, who are reasonable. And maybe it'll take work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I admit that. Mm -hmm. But just the perception, I think, is of great importance. Uh -huh. so, yeah. so begin to get down to the realities of things. Yeah. If you can, that would be a, a good thing. What were they fighting in 88 or 80 when they were fighting Shia? Uh, 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 Iraq and Iran were fighting that horrible war. A million killed. A million killed. Killed, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was that about? Was that resources, money, influence, realpolitik? I think or all of it. Or was that religiously based? I think, I think all of it in a certain way. Now, uh, Iraq was under Saddam Hussein. Yeah, right. Uh, was pretty secular. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, they had a lot of advanced things. They had a lot of sixty uh, percent of the parliament were women, I think, and the education was widespread. The education was widespread, certainly. Yeah. But you know, this it was, was a, basically it was, a dictator. A, it was basic. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. basically identified though as a Sunni state. Yeah, yeah. So, the, you're right. It, religion did play a role, but there were also questions of borders. There's yeah. a question of which, uh, which state is the real yeah, po yeah, politic. Yeah. Uh, which state is the dominant one in the region? There was oil. Yeah, there was oil. Mm -hmm. uh, that's true. Um, although Iraq had more, much more than, than yeah. Iran, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and there was ju and there was just a traditional uh -huh. conflict over yeah. borders yeah. and uh, and the like. Those are yeah. And but there was this. What we're trying to do is find a distinction between the Shia and the Sunni, and the Sunni seem to be a trust into. A uh, certain group, uh, the descendant, it goes back to that and so forth. But the Shia have a different <coughs> take on things. Uh, is there anything to be said for the, are you familiar with or where do you think uh, the Shia in a certain, uh, the twelfth Imam? Does that figure, the hidden Imam, the twelfth Imam, the idea that the there's a prophetic tradition that the Shia have faith in the twelfth Imam, the hidden Imam? Right that's going to emerge much like the Jews had a, a, a tradition of faith in the Messiah, the Mashiach, 
in the time ahead, a prophetic tradition yeah, that maybe that, got lost with Constantine or something, I think, I you think know, that, in the West. I think that's true. And is true. there anything to be said for this prophetic tradition that had been traditionally Judaic uh, being overcome? I mean, except well, you've, got, you've got a few, it, it sounds very esoteric, it's religious idea. You've got a few people like Natura Carta and so forth who support things, and they see it as a blasphemy. The whole uh, high thing of the establishment of this Israel, is and isn't the Israeli uh, presence and establishment and success part of something that is intrinsic to that part of the world that has to be addressed at a certain level? Okay, and is I, there not a very real threat I, in terms of the unleashing of the God of Ramadan, of atomic exchange, of killing me by the people of the world, by the attitude of Mr. Netanyahu and people in Israel? Um, I think um, President Netanyahu would be happy to link up Zionism with the religion. Mm. Uh, but Zionism isn't religious. Mm. Uh, mm. Modern Zionism emerges actually with a Herzl friend. Herzl was an atheist, I think. Uh, yeah, certainly yeah. an agnostic. Mm -hmm. And uh, even earlier with uh, Moses Hess, who yeah. helped actually helped Marx write the Communist Manifesto. But this larger, oh, first of all, the uh, prophetic tradition, it doesn't have any meaning at all. Uh, also, we're in a period of time of qualitative transformation where they're interested in established institutions. There's always established institutions that are going to be, let's say, challenged by the emerging new reality. There's and a new th thing. And there's a faith with the prophetic tradition. Is the prophetic tradition dead? It doesn't have any meaning now. It all can be decided by accounts of major corporations and material considerations. Is the prophetic, the idea of faith, there's something new in the future that we're holding with. Does that serve at all the thinking of the, uh, the Shia branch of Islam? Let me put it to you this with way. With the 12th Imam. It, it, to as soon as you think of a revolution... You're thinking you, of a prophecy. You, you, you're thinking in right? a certain sense prophecy, so, and yeah. Although right. uh, uh, we have to be clear, I mean, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini never considered himself the 12th Imam. No, he didn't know no, it's to emerge. But, exactly. It is but to emerge. It looks that way to the majority, uh, to... Uh, the, uh, to especially the uneducated. And the, the uneducated in, in, uh, in, in, in Iran, yeah, in yeah. Shia. It uh, looked, the, the it, idea of the, the same kind of thing that, uh, that uh, gave uh, solace to the Jews in the 6th, 7th century or something, uh, next year in Jerusalem, the, the future, the prophetic tradition want. has been important in terms of spiritual understanding of people and solace to people and throughout a long, dreary history. Just like... Uh, in, in, um, among Jews, there's a difference between Talmud and Kabbalah. Oh. Uh, so, so the um, the Sunni are seen as much more locked into the official rigors of the faith. Right, right. That prophetic, and that's a, that's a conflict. You're right between. Uh, the, future. Say, the, the future and the past. Right, and we're still living with it. Yeah. We're still living. We I, need some futures now in terms of the overall secular organization. We don't have a system that's really uh, what the future requires at all levels of political and economic organization now. That's we correct. have dysfunction at all levels, so there are people that have a faith in something new emerging now it, within this broader secular world that's needed. So the same might be motivating people all around the world, including Islam. And if you've got a tradition of the, the Mashiach is coming, my old teach wait my, for the Mashiach. My, uh, and wh why did the Jews not wait for the? Where's the Mashiach? Uh, we're going to be. If you're going to be, where is where is Godot in the play? Oh, okay, that uh, is another way of saying. Uh, it, but, I was yeah. referring to waiting for Godot. Yeah, by, I know. Uh, of by course, Becker. yeah. yeah. Uh, but I let me see what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. Um, Maybe I got off case. No, I was going to say I was going to say the following. Um, my old teacher mm. was the great philosopher of Utopia. His okay. name was Ernst Bloch. Oh, okay. In, well, in Europe, he would be yeah. known like I don't know James Joyce. Yeah, right. right, right okay. Yeah. Twenty volumes worth of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, Bloch drew a distinction between what he called uh, the false and the actual utopia. Okay. And. Yeah. This is in the prophetic yeah. tradition. He really right. picked that up. 
Uh, and he also knew Arabic philosophy, which is very interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, I yeah, studied right. with him in 1973. I'd never Good. heard of this stuff. Good for you. Yeah, um, I didn't know that. But yeah. in, any yeah. in, in any event, mm -hmm. um, the false utopia is one that covers over and obscures the actual problems that people have today. Okay, that's a false dream. Yeah. 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 And uh, whereas the, the actual one. Yes, what about uh, that? That's the one which claims that utopia is connected with specifying the problems we have today. And Wait a minute. Do it again. Say it again. What right. is the difference? The difference would be that on one hand, uh, a false utopia is one. You can think of Nazism yeah, as an right. example. Okay, yeah, or, right, right. Uh, Stalinism. Maybe. Stalinism. Yeah, yeah. Is one that is basically purely ideological. Uh -huh. And it covers over the actual covers problems. Over. Co yeah, and obscures it's cover, it's cover story for yeah, yeah what's going it on. It obscures yeah. what's yeah. actually going on. Right, right, right. Whereas right. an honest utopia in Bloch's terms yeah. is one which illuminates what's going on today. Uh -huh. That's the only way you can get a focus on utopia is to find out what the actual conflicts and contradictions are at the moment. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. and I think that you know if you want to put it that way. Uh, if one wants to deal with the prophetic tradition or the utopian tradition, one has to do it in this manner. Uh -huh. Because to simply embrace utopia, yeah. I mean, fascists have always ha uh, been utopian. Well, there have probably have been dreamers and things like that. Uh, yeah, no, but I mean, even... But, uh, well, you're talking and, about a religious, uh, a religious uh, sensibility. And it, it, it did... You also had it with Marx. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, well, that was yeah. secular. Yeah, you yeah. had it with Marx. That was that. that in that's in a, a way, you had it with a certain enlightenment But you're figures. talking about a religious, a religio. I think religio means to hold. It's a way in which people get identity. It's been very important. For very people. important. And we've been around a long time, a couple hundred thousand years. We Indeed. had to struggle along in a very materialistically Indeed. un... Uh, it, it hasn't been a, a, a buttercups and lily pops. It's been very difficult and everything. A lot of sores a lot of upset, a lot of difficulty you have to put up with. And we may be coming, and I guess it really comes around to it in a way. Where are we now, humanity, at this particular time? What's the year now, or the Christian era, 2014? Uh, where are we? Do we have a liaison with the future that is qualitatively in any way different than the one that we've inherited, the institutions? Do we have a lot of institutional assumptions that are out of date with what the future now allows That's in a liberated true. way? The liberation is coming. There's, they would sing, tomorrow a great wake-up morning. Are we coming to a time of a great wake-up morning of a liberation of the human society and the ecology, which the technology seems to be making available if we get a right system for forming the material world, capital formation, distribution, buying power, by and letting, mm -hmm. uh, or are we still at a time where we have to just struggle along with the outdated ideas based on real politic? Whoever's got the biggest gun just rules, and that's it. Well, certainly not. And are we optimistic or pessimistic for the human prospect as we look ahead? Well, let me put it to you this way: I don't think uh, security, or, uh, national or global. Uh, emanates from the barrel of a gun. You don't think that? No. What does it, er what does it er emanate from? I if that isn't what backs it up. I mean, it's money and power is backed up by whoever's got the biggest power. Uh, yeah. Isn't, but, it? isn't uh, that realpolitik? In, re in terms of realpolitik, uh, yeah. You can but say I that two ways, realpolitik or realpolitik, Haushofer, you know, German. It is whoever's got the club rules. And that's what backs it up. Then that gets, you know, or no, or explain to me. Or just uh, maybe no, I'm what off base. R what rules is the person who understands the logic of power. Okay. Um, that's from Machiavelli um, yes. originally. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, from Bismarck. Mm -hmm. uh, Bismarck also, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and Bismarck's thinkers. And how do we uh, define power? Uh, we define power in terms of the state. The state, and how do we define the power of the state if it isn't battleships and Catlin guns and supported uh, uh, the uh, gun, one, the proof. One way the power is based mostly military advantage it, it, it's, throughout all of history. It's in, 
it's interconnected with it. Oh, How okay. do you explain Switzerland? Well, you got soft power, you got Mr. Nye and all that. You got so you got propaganda, you got public and all you of that. And you but have Switzerland. Well, you have Switzerland. That, and okay. you have uh, you have a whole set of states in Scandinavia. Well, how do we do? Well, okay, but I don't quite understand why it hasn't been military, precision, civilized, the military prowess, which has given legitimacy, uh, political legitimacy to a particular clique that's ruling with the power to have guns to enforce no, their that, power. You know, that, and that's the reality. Yeah. It I, still is. And then it's got economic power and soft power, and public relations, all the rest of it. And so that's realpolitik. Uh, but, uh, let me put it to you this way. In a certain, there's a certain understanding of realpolitik and it's the following. If it's just the guns, it makes no sense, r realistically, for the state constantly to be uh, bringing out the guns. No, you got to bring you bring wait, the wait, guns wait, wait, make wait, it wait, possible wait. for the PR and the bullshit. Uh, you know, and the education behind. and the rest of it. But yeah. the, the 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 great politician is the one who doesn't have to use the guns. Well, how does that them. is that ever been? Yeah, that it was not the basic power of a political legitimacy. Yeah, it, it is. Oh, by. George Washington or no? Uh, I think uh, I th who I th where uh, you know, Jesus, Gandhi. Jesus had good ideas. Gandhi. John did, Gandhi uh, did a thing strategic. Uh, he had no choice. Uh, if he could have, he could have. Oh no, he did, he had a choice. Okay. Uh, uh, Martin Luther King. Well, okay. Uh, that. Mandela. Yeah, but I noticed that they uh, they haven't solved the question of inequality. The prisons are that's full of black people. That's the utopian question. Yeah. See, I mean that you can't you can't have one with the other. Uh, with the, you got to distinguish. Mm -hmm. um, and all I'm saying is that at some level, you're not going to have you're not going to have security until there's some understanding of the other that's threatening you. That's security of the uh, the the at the end of time. You we will finally finally have justice. We may we do not live in a just world. No, we don't. Okay, we may have justice for, uh, beckoning. Are we going to be able to achieve it, or are we going to unleash the weapons that have been the base of political power and destroy the whole friggin' species? Uh, which is the point. Uh, that's where the humanity stands now. Where do we stand on that front? Is Mr. Netanyahu going to lob a couple into Iran and set off the gamma demora over no. these issues, or uh, not? Are we going to make it, or are we going to? We can liberate or annihilate the species. At this time, with there the power an, that is collectively held, uh, uh, any uh, chance we're going to uh, do the former rather than the other? There was an old line mm. uh, that socialists used to use mm. uh, the choice between socialism or barbarism. This well, is 19th century stuff. That's 19th century. Now, you're, but you're, uh, the way you're framing the question is the same. There's a hell of a lot of alternatives between barbarism and, and socialism for okay. the entire world. Uh, there well, are I framed it liberation. We have a capability yeah. that we don't realize. We have an opt. We have yeah, capability that. Take that we haven't had. I agree with There's that. There's a new thing. We don't bother to take advantage of it. We just reify outdated institutions based upon reality. Uh, that I, uh, I agree with you. And our political leadership isn't giving us that. But we he, should he get is. it from you and from other people that are trying to get that uh, out well, of I the table. Wish I, I wish I were that wise, but uh, I just think that there are. Um, Choices that exist between these parameters. Okay, good. Thanks for if that. If that helps, <laughs> yeah, and helps. what we got to no, do is push them yourself. as much as possible. Okay, obviously that makes the good sense. Your pleasure. I'm sorry, I didn't mean I got carried away. No, no, away. no. It's quite. Your pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Is that Steve and Eric Broner, a major force for peace in, in the world. Thanks a lot for all the good work. Thank and you. Thanks for coming in. We're I coming back it. again tomorrow. Just uh, look forward to that. Thanks again, Stephen. Always, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you.